What's going on, everybody? Welcome into the Tuesday, April 2nd, 2024 edition of the Daily Energy Newsbeat Stand-Up. Here are today's top headlines. First up, BlackRock hit with cease and desist after allegedly misleading investors about ESG practices. Love us a good Larry Fink story. Next up, Janet Yellen challenges clean energy subsidies for market fairness. Yikes, this should be a good. Great video to go with this one. Next up, how federal tax dollars um, meant or how federal tax dollars meant to fight climate change could end up boosting Louisiana's fossil fuel production. And finally, good news and bad news on the Pennsylvania electricity front that, that includes reduced CO2 emissions, but high cost for residents. As always, you eat it through the drive through Stu will toss it over to me. I will quickly have, uh, cover what happened with oil and gas today. Prices you know, above $83 for oil. We absolutely love that. And uh, we'll lightly touch on rig counts. I was out of pocket yesterday. Um, and then so we'll cover rig counts a day behind. And then we'll also talk about Kimbridge's open letter to Silverbow shareholders. Um, this is wow. turning into a, a fun activist fight that we will get to the bottom <laughs> of here on the podcast. We will cover all that in a bag of chips, guys. As always, I am Michael Tanner, joined by Stuart Turley. Go ahead and kick us off, my man. Hey, let's go over to our buddy over there, Fink. Uh, BlackRock hit with cease and desist after allegedly misleading investors about ESG practices. Couldn't happen to a nicer guy. The the headline, the subheadline is the cease and desist order was issued by Mississippi Mississippi Secretary of State Michael Watson. Michael. Quote, BlackRock made untrue statements of certain to its fund do not incorporate ESG considerations as detailed extensively in this order. BlackRock stated on multiple occasions, either expressly through publications or by action, the company does in fact incorporate ESG considerations in its non-ESG funds. <laughs> I think this is absolutely hysterical yep. that in ESG investing hypocrisy or come is coming from the folks that are yelling uh, about investing in green and trying to kill the fossil fuel industry. I just thought it was really pretty funny. Yeah, I mean, we, we love a good energy hypocrisy. I, I love the fact that it's completely now turned on its head. They were so far down the ESG rabbit hole, and now they're getting a cease and desist letter to stop. Um, <laughs> There's another... I think this is more of a show of, hey, we don't like BlackRock. Will this go anywhere? Will there maybe be some fines? Well, I don't this know, is, it... there's about 13 other states that have their states that are bailing out. Uh, eight billion dollars last week you and i covered out of texas you know giving them the double barrel finger and then notably uh re uh blackrock just re recently withdrew from the climate action 100 alliance you and i talked about when is investor hypocrisy going to hit a uh all-time uh um, like, hey, we need our money back here. I think we finally are finding out what that mark is. Yeah, no, absolutely. All right, what's next? Hey, let's go to our buddy over here, Secretary Yellen. Uh, Yellen challenges clean energy subsidies for market fairness. I want to give her a shout out in that I think that she is missing uh, some uh, marbles up there, but her barber definitely is needing. Uh, my, I've got a better barber, but I, I, Miss Producer, could you call up this 18 second clip? I've got a, a, a video of her, an exclusive video showing her getting ready for this meeting. And so let's go ahead and kick that off. <laughs> it's, it's absolutely insane what we just i mean i've never I seen where to start look too that, look at that poor thing what in the world is that that is inspiration for janet yeah uh, look at the fur falling on the floor 
<laughs> hey, at least she's able to get a haircut, unlike you. Ooh, no, mine, mine's a razor. So uh, let's go <laughs> to the right. article, though. I want to give her a shout out. This is actually she plans to voice these subsidy concerns during her upcoming diplomatic travels. Her primary worry is that national subsidies on the energy sector may lead to an oversaturated market and global price imbalances. And mm. she's also leaning and saying that there is too much clean energy subsidies in the pricing models. Uh, wow. Where did this come from? Did she actually wake up and get fetterman so that she starts making sense? I'm not sure. I like it, but it was like, what am I seeing She's, here? It's, 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 I, I won't get into it. What's next? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm full of shocks today. This article was absolutely a hoot. How federal tax dollars meant to fight climate change could end up boosting Louisiana's fossil uh, uh, per, uh, fuel. Billions of dollars, tax dollars, will be pouring into Louisiana. Uh, to fight climate change, yet the projects they're supporting may actually boost fossil fuels, the very products warming the planet. I actually really enjoyed this article because I heard the his, the author's head snap a few times. His neck was cracking and he was having some serious problems by the time he got through this article. Fossil fuel industry advocates are eager to get project approved. Louisiana has a chance with our geological structures to make a big splash in the pond for co2 in the world and it's because of the co2 injection wells it's because of just the way um uh co2 and uh, is being redone take a look at this map miss producer if you could bring this over take a look at the louisiana map with all of the pipelines and infrastructure going into the gulf of mexico and you'll notice that there are some of those in there, those greener ones. There are uh, Strategic Petroleum Reserve. <laughs> you know, there's a couple biomass yep. power plants in there. There's all these others. But when you take a look at it, the funds are actually the more we use renewables in this area with CO2, the more fossil fuels we're going to end up. You've been using. saying this for years now. The more we go green, the more we go fossil. And now it's been confirmed. It is confirmed. And, I hate and, I hate saying you were right, but we have to say on this podcast right now, you were right. Uh, it's only the second time, dude. Only the second Hopefully time. Hopefully it's the last. What's oh, next? Holy smokes, Batman. Uh, good news and bad news for Pennsylvania. I'm full of good news. I'm a cheery kind of guy today. Electricity includes reduced CO2 emissions, but a higher cost for residents. Uh, here's the subtitle. According to a PECO report in Pennsylvania, reduced its carbon dioxide emissions by 10%, the largest year-on-year -year decline since 1990, but the cost of cents per kilowatt hour is higher than the national average. Rut row. Now, here's where the some stats come in. Pennsylvania is still highly dependent on natural gas, uh, a fossil fuel for 59% of its electrical generation, more than the U.S. Uh, average. Uh, it should be 100%. You're literally in the heart of the Appalachia Basin. Why is it not 100 and and they want to know why uh, they um, they they only get three point seven percent other than fossil fuels or nuclear. <laughs> it's brutal. The it's, only it's reason brutal. they reduced their CO two uh, is because of reducing coal plants. Yeah. PECO, which operates electric services to 1.7 million customers within Bucks, Chester, Delaware, Montgomery, Philadelphia, and York counties, is the largest electricity provider, and it's 45th in country in terms of renewables. <laughs> but, 
but also there's this quote in here from Thomas Schuster. The only thing preventing Paco from supplying more affordable solar energy to his customers is the antiquated procurement, procurement process. process. But yes. So you're telling me it's an old procurement process that's slowing us from afford. That's crazy to think about. Well, we know solar doesn't pay off. Layer in an antiquated, uh, you know, procurement process, you know, they're in trouble. Oh, yeah. Um, and, and the only thing that's happening is the they get to pay for it uh, in the drive through. I yeah, want to give a absolutely. shout out again to Janet Yellen for making my day to prove that I'm right again. And she's having a great hair day today. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. Off to you, Michael. All right, well, we'll go ahead and, uh, and and before we flip over to finance, guys, we'll pay the bills around here. As always, you can check us out online, www.energynewsbeat.com. All the news and analysis you've heard is brought to you by that website. Stu and the team do a tremendous job making sure that website stays up to speed with everything you need to know to be the tip of the spear when it comes to the oil and gas business dashboard.energynewsbeat.com the best place for your data energy news combo check us out um uh there as always energynewsbeat.com but let's move into finance guys um, i mean markets had an okay day today um we, we saw a little bit of, of 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 upside on the nasdaq nasdaq up two tenths of a percentage point smp actually down about two tenths of a percentage point so from a from a market standpoint we saw it fairly choppy really where where most of the gains to be had we're in crude oil. We are up a little bit over 1%, bringing uh, US WTI um, up to a five month closing high, which is a little bit above 83.71, um, where we currently trade at right now. Brent Futures currently trading 87.44, mainly off the back that, you know, some, some, some economic growth. That, that's happening right now in U.S. and China will continue to boost demand. Um, you know, we already know that Russia is going to be holding back some supplies. So that balance is sort has, you know, you know, started to kind of squeeze its ugly head here. Um, we did see that the U.S. diesel crack spread, which, again, what is that? That measures different refining outputs relative to profit. So you think of it as kind of the profit margin um, for U.S. diesel narrow to its lowest since May 2023 for a second day, which is good. Our U.S. The U.S. U.S. manufacturing index actually jumped um, for the first time in about one, one and a half years. Um, you know, so that is, again, mainly leading to a lot of this increased demand segment. You know, I can tell you the entire business loves themselves a good $83 oil. Um, since I was out yesterday, we'll quickly cover rig counts. Uh, Miss Producer, if you don't mind pulling up this image right now, you're seeing rig counts. Um, for, for United States finished, um, uh, net, uh, negative for three rigs. So we see the current count 621. Um, that's a drop of three relative to what it was week over week. You can kind of see the, the, the breakout there, um, in terms of, we had about 506 oil, 112 gas. We're still seeing gas rigs. It was all oil rigs that were shedded, which, which is super interesting. And we saw those rigs get dropped from Colorado, Louisiana, um, and Texas, um, relative or excuse me, um, relative week over week, but we did see New Mexico bring five rigs. So that Delaware Bay, that bone spring stuff is, is really coming up to play right there. Um, the only other thing I've got is I've got Kimridge here, Stu. This is, there's a war going on right now. We've got, I mean, Kimridge issues open letter to Silverbow shareholders. So they got to give you guys the backstory. Silverbow and, and, and Kimridge are engaged in this war of, of PR in order to, you know, eventually end up at, at some said merger. So to give you guys the backstory, Kimridge owns about 12.9% of the outstanding shares and is the largest shareholder in Silverbow, which is a publicly backed company uh, or publicly traded company uh, that sits in, 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 in and is a primary Eagleford producer. Um, Kimridge being the largest investor in Silverbow has proposed multiple different strategies in order to increase quote unquote shareholder value out of silver bow. They've been going back and forth on a combination of silver bow and injection of about 300 million of capital and the acquisition of Kimridge, Texas gas, which was a, a, a Kimridge operated unit, which, which was started in 2022. Um, I mean, we could go through and read this, you know, big, big, Big letters in this PR release do Silverbow's misleading claims regarding its engagement. Big, bold letters. The next one, Silverbow's incumbent board and management strategy 
And they highlight the board and management team are singularly focused on fighting Kimrich at all times and at all costs, quote unquote. And stand and there's another part that says and stand ready to negotiate in good faith with the company. Unfortunately, Silverbow has taken a different course. They go ahead and lay out um, why they think this is a great deal. They they they, they talk a little a lot about Kimrich Texas Gas. They release a lot of different information. They released a reserve report, a lot of like really minute data. Um, considering the fact that um, relative to what a normal company... I mean, they're, they're going to wars, too. They released publicly the reserve report. They put together a special slide deck. I mean, we might have to do a whole deal spotlight on this because clearly there's something Silverbow and... You know, there's something Silver Bow and Kimridge, that they're on the different page. I mean, I looked preliminary at some of the stuff Kimridge released. I don't know if Kimridge Natural or Texas Gas is, is that great. You're talking it's 80% nat gas right now. You're talking... Well... I mean, you're only at a dollar eighty natural gas. There's very little room to move. Um, only eleven percent oil, nine percent natural gas. Um, you know, they've got forty four cents for LOE. You know, they've they've it's it's really difficult to see how, you know, how they really want to um um play this. What I do like is they did a both a six to one and twenty to one. Um, conversion for natural gas. So that's from, from a BOE to natural gas. So I really like that. But they're going to war. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see here. The Dallas Fed survey oil we'll and cover gas. That. We'll cover that tomorrow. We got to cover the Dallas Fed survey tomorrow. So okay, that'll be cool. a good one because that's got some real good nuggets in there. It does. It's got cool. some really good nuggets. But no, it's... Uh, Kimridge going to war, so got to love it. We'll see what the outcome is here. But um, that's really all I've got, Stu. What what are you looking at for the rest of the day? Oh, I'm busy as all get out. Got to love customers. Got to love them. Got to love it. We appreciate everybody who's tuned in. We appreciate it. We've got some great sponsors that we're lining up here, so we're excited to bring you some stuff there. But with that, guys, we'll go ahead and let you get out of here, get back to work. Appreciate everybody for checking us out. World's greatest website, energynewsbeat.com. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank <laughs> you.